guys! Welcome back to my channel. On this video, I will share with you kung paano ko nakuha yung aking open work permit dito sa Canada under my husband's student work permit in less than one day. So, if you're interested in this topic, please keep on watching and I'm gonna let you know how I did it in less than a day. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any comments or suggestions uh, or any questions, just please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you or you could contact me as well if you know my Facebook or my email address. I would be happy to share what I know. I'm not a professional at this. I'm gonna share with you uh, what I know and uh, what's based on my experience. So keep on watching. So nakwento ko na nga sa inyo na I went here as a visitor and um, Mark went here as a student. So, meron siyang student permit, meron akong visitor's visa. So, when we got here in November 2017, um, mag-aaral siya, start niya ay January. So, we had a couple months to prepare. Nag-travel-travel muna, of course, bago ang mga stress, stress ng school. But it was okay, was all good. And, um, how I got my open work permit. That's our main topic. So, I'll jump there na. Wala na ako masyadong ikukwento pa sa inyo. I did it at the border in less than a day. And uh, how they call it or yung tawag nila sa process na yon ay flag polling. So, ano nga ba yung flag polling? Flag polling, guys, is yung pagkuha ng open work permit at the border. So, ano yung mga requirements, anong gagawin, ano yung kailangan. You have to make sure that you have all the requirements needed. At you have to make sure that you are really eligible for what you are applying for para hindi naman mata ma ano, ma masayang yung pagod mo na magpunta doon. Kasi you have to go there very early in the morning. I went there one time, 6 a.m., I didn't get in that's too late. Talagang late na yung 6 a.m. You have to be there at least before 5 a.m. to make sure na makakapasok ka. So, for the first, um, the first thing that you need to know, you have to bring tag 25 cents na Canadian coins. Kasi, bago ka makalipat sa border ng U.S., kailangan mo ng coins na yon kailangan magdala ka kasi hindi sila nag accept ng, ng paper money or ng ibang coins, 25 cents lang I think it was a dollar, so apat na 25 cents na coins, kung dalawa kayo, uh, eight, hindi ko alam kung nagbago na ngayon, but just to make sure, bring a lot of them maximum 3 dollars and then after you put your money, so parang lumabas ka na ng kananan nun, guys, kasi yun na yung border, eh. talagang lumampas ka na. So, ang gagawin mo, in our case, we did this at Rainbow Bridge dito sa Niagara Falls. There are a lot of borders, guys, just so you know. I-search ninyo kung nasan kayo, kung ano yung pinakamalapit na border sa inyo na pwede nyo gawin ito. So, ayun nga, nag-cross kami ng border and then, pagdating sa border ng US, sa Buffalo, New York, what they will ask you at the border, actually, they will not ask you. You just have to let them know, I'm here, I'm, fla I'm like, I'm flagpoling, just tell them. Mag-flagpol ka and then, they will get your passport, they will write um, on a piece of paper, it says they're flagpoling, your information, denied entry sa US. So, kaya ang lagi nilang sinasuggest, you should at least stay in the US for two or three days or even one day is okay para naman wala kang bad record na denied entry into the US. But in our case, expired na yung US visa ko. At walang US visa si Mark. Kaya, that's okay. We could explain that in the future if if we would apply for a, new, uh, for a US visa. We will just explain to them we did flag polling. That's why we got denied entry into the US because we didn't really want to go into the US. Um, so, that's the point of it. So, pag nakuha mo na yung paper na yun, i-keep mo yun kasama lahat ng requirements mo and your passport don't forget to bring your passport. Of course, halis ka ng Canada at babalik ka kailangan mo ng passport mo. And then, 
pagdating mo ulit, lakad lang yun, mga 5 to 10 minutes walk lang siya yung border. So, pagbalik mo ng border ng Canada, ano, meron ka na makikita doon. Kung wala ka pa nakita na ka-line, very good kasi una ka ibig sabihin. So, magla meron lang kayong linya doon na maghihintay kayo kasi 8am pa sila magpapapasok. So, kung dumating ka doon ng 5am, you have to wait 3 hours. Sacrifice talaga siya guys, but it's worth it. Biruin mo, makukuha mo yung open work permit mo, or yung student permit mo, or re renewal, whatever it is, in less than 3 hours, or less than a day. San ka pa, diba? Kesa naman maghintay ka online na hindi mo alam, kinakabahan-gabahan ka kung ma-approve ako, or madidinay ako, and then, there as well, they will be able to let you know kung, limbawa, andun ka, tapos sabi nila, oh, kulang naman yung papel mo, you will be able to know what your, ano, kung ano yung mga, ano, mga kailangan mo pang dalhin in the future, i-explain nila sa'yo. Mabait naman sila, basta be patient and sacrifice guys, uh, that's what I will say, uh, nung una kami pumunta we went there at 6am, di kami nakapasok kasi super late na yun, sobrang haba na ng pila nun, sometimes they will only let 5 people in, sometimes 10 it depends, walang may alam kung ano, kung ilang tao yung papapasukin nila, but if they think that it's enough, they'll just tell everyone na nasa likod ng line na that's all for today you could come back tomorrow if you want but you have to do it early in the morning to make sure you get in so that's one important thing be early guys kasi talagang i-sacrifice lang one one um magpuyat ka ng one day or magpuyat ba yung tawag doon pag magigising na maaga basta tiisin mo lang muna yung antok mo mag coffee ka or whatever um basta i-sacrifice mo yung araw na yun at prepare for it make sure also that you do look presentable naman di ba so while we're waiting uh, for 8am pag natawag ka na i-check nila ulit yung passport mo tapos sasabihin titignan yung requirements mo yung requirements usually yung student permit ng husband or wife mo um, yung proof na nag-aaral siya ng full time sa ano sa sa college or university um, tingin ko yung amin nun yung dinala namin parang ano, yung timetable ni Mark yung timetable ibig sabihin yung schedule niya ba sa pag-aaral niya na full time talaga siya nag-aaral and then what else marriage certificate of course yung pambayad mo and then there are other few little things na pwede mo naman i-search online din yung mga requirements na yon. I will not go through all of them here because this is specifically for how you could get it in less than a day. And then, when you have those, you will um, show it to them and then pagka nakita na nila, they're okay, they will let you in. Pupunta na kayo dun sa mismong office, guys. So, pagpasok nyo sa mismong office, pila na naman doon. Actually, they change it recently. Hindi na kayo pipila. Uupo na lang kayo and then you will just wait for your name to be called. Kasi na, na, ipapasa na yung mga papers nyo doon. So, ni-review na nila. Halimbawa, yung immigration officer na to, yung nag-review ng paper mo. Pag na-review na niya, alam niya na yung mga itatanong sa'yo, they will call you. So, pagkatawag nila sa'yo, doon na nila itatanong yung mga questions nila iba-iba. In our case ang question ni ano ba ang pang question nila sa amin noon ang question lang nila how long have we been married ganyan um, what are we planning to do here ganyan mag-aaral nga si Mark very simple questions na huwag ka lang kabahan and be natural be yourself I would say and everything will fall into place of course pray as well yun yung pinaka pinaka weapon mo talaga you have to pray of course that everything will go smooth sa pag process and everything like that so I would suggest um, tell your friends, pray for you because um, you will go through uh, immigration na mag apply ka nga ng visa ganyan, so ayun nga, natawag na kami and then um, they were asking a few questions we were able to answer them after that, sabi nila okay, so now you have to pay, pag sinabi nilang you have to pay, ah, approve ka na guys, 
So, in our case, uh, uh, nung una ako mag-apply, sa, nung under pa siya ng student permit ni Mark, I got it in less than 3 hours. Literally, guys, less than 3 hours. So, pagkabayad namin, after nang nakuha na namin yung resibo, balik lang kami dun sa immigration officer na nag-review ng papers namin, binigay namin yung resibo, and then wait ulit mga 5 to 10 minutes, and then they will call you again. Tapos, ibibigay na sa'yo yung, ano, yung um, work permit mo. So, yung work permit ko na yun, nandito, pero hindi ko naman ipapakita uh, because um, these are confidential papers na guys. But, mind you, sometimes sa open work permit, there are conditions. Conditions, ibig sabihin, mga, um, mga bagay na hindi mo pwedeng gawin. Condition. <laughs> Very self-explanatory. Why did... I need to explain that. So, ayun, sometimes there are conditions. In my case, merong condition yung akin because I did not want to um, get a medical done. Hindi na ako nagpa-medical. Sabi ko, ay, wala naman akong balak mag-work mag for uh, a medical institution or child care or primary, secondary school. So, bakit pa ako magpapamedical, ba diba? Extra expense lang din siya. So, um, ayun, hindi na ako nagpamedical. And then, sabi lang sa akin, so, these are your conditions. Sabi niya ganyan, kung ayaw magpamedical, you are not authorized to work in child care, primary, secondary school teaching, health service field occupations. And then, yung second condition, unless authorized, sabi, you are prohibited from attending any educational institution. So, hindi ka pwede mag-aral. Or taking any academic, professional, or vocational training course. Of course, lagi ito nasa condition not valid for employment and business is related to the sex trade such as strip clubs, massage parlors, or escort services. Yun laging nasa mga conditions sa mga open work permit. So, yun lang yung tatlong condition, guys. The rest, kung anong gusto mong gawin, you can do it. Kung anong gusto mong trabaho, gusto mong maging, yup! And then, as soon as I got my open work permit, I was so happy I remember that time. Sobrang saya ko talaga. I can't believe it. I got it in less than a day. It's a good thing to know, guys. Not everyone know this process. So, I would suggest... But you have to make sure wherever you're from, kasi minsan yung mga borders, they only allow uh, flag polling for certain days. Hindi buong week inaalaw nila yan. For example, dito sa Rainbow Bridge sa Niagara, they only allow it every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They mind you guys, nag-change din siya every now and then. So, before ka pumunta, you have to really make sure that um, yun yung mga schedule pa din nila. They only do it in the morning. So, in our case, we went only from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. 8 a.m. kasi sila magpapapasok. Pero, the, the earlier, the better. Kasi, kung medyo late ka na, hindi ka na makakapasok. Kasi nga, may cut-off sila. So, ayun, it is very easy Kung meron man ako nakalimutan, kung merong hindi clear, as I've said, you could leave your questions down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you if I know the answer. Kung hindi naman, you could visit the Canadian Immigration website. It is cic.gc.ca. And then from there, there's a search bar. Whatever you're looking for, just type it in and search it lahat doon legitimate yung sagot mas legitimate sa mga sagot ko sa inyo so yeah and after mo makuha yung work permit mo ano bang mga kasunod mong gagawin of course you have to get your social insurance number they call it SIN here sa US alam ko SSN yung tawag nila social security number ah SIN SIN dito Alam ko SIN, Social Security Number sa US SSN, I remember when I was there. But dito, let me double check actually. Yeah, SIN, Social Insurance Number, I'm right. So, yun, you have to get your social insurance number, punta lang kayo sa Service Ontario, dala kayo ng piece of ID, and also... Two, two valid IDs and then yung permit ninyo and then 
they will give you your social insurance number which is very precious na kailangan i-keep mo walang iba ma makakakita dapat um, it is a very confidential number um, yun um, yung mga ano, employer yun yun ni require nila madalas bago pa nila i-employ you have to have a social insurance number that's for taxes so ayun there you go guys, um, it's done, uh, it's very simple, I hope may natutunan kayo sa video na to, at kung may tanong kayo, just ask them, ask your questions on the comment section below, and in the future, uh, yung i-share ko naman sa inyo, yung open work permit under your husband or wife's post graduate work permit, hindi na student permit kasi gumraduate na sila example, pagka graduate nila makakuha silang post graduate work permit, iba yung requirements dun guys sa ano, dun sa na explain natin ngayon, kaya I hope you uh, stay tuned for that one, in the future um, I'll be able to share that with you as well uh, hinay hinay lang muna, konti konti kasi too much information um I, I don't know. Para sa akin, mas malinaw kapag ka konti konti. Limbawa, for this video, it's only focused on open work permit under your partner's student work permit. So, yeah, that's all, guys. Good luck if you are planning to go here, if you are planning to study in Canada, or if you are planning to come with your husband or wife who is here in Canada as a full time student. Good luck. Pray for it. Nothing is impossible when you pray. And, um, ayan, yun yung masashare ko. Ang pinaka uh, weapon natin talaga yung prayer. We have to believe that uh, uh, we will get what we prayed for, we claim it, and um, it will be given to us. And uh, thank you guys for watching this video until the end. I hope I'll see you on my next video. And uh, God bless you always. Oops, one more thing. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please, and like this video. Thank you.